Well, the usual misinformation that we've seen so regularly with the Trump court appearances. Uh, in a moment, I'll be speaking to Nima Rumani, who's a former federal prosecutor who will be uh, giving his thoughts on what we've seen. But let's head to Neda Torfik, who's there outside of the courtroom. Neda, just give me a sense of the drama of today and what has actually been happening in the courtroom itself. Yeah, well, Matthew, inside, of course, Donald Trump coming face to face with the Manhattan District Attorney as both sides watch as their teams uh, battle this out for them in the courtroom outside here. A small group of counter protests going on, those for and against Donald Trump. So it has been uh, an interesting morning to see kind of a briefly tensions flaring with those protesters here outside of court. But we are, of course, still waiting for the high stakes jury selection process to get underway. Jury selection is often uh, thought of as a make or break moment for either side because ultimately Donald Trump's fate will be in the hands of those 12 jurors and six alternates. And both sides will be trying to go through uh, and pick the most favorable jury for their side. Now, the judge has said this is the most extensive questionnaire they have ever planned for a jury, potential jurors to go through. It includes more than 40 questions, Matthew, about what kind of news jurors, uh, potential jurors consume if they belong to any extremist groups. So we do expect that to get underway shortly. But for the moment, court has been in session really trying to tie up a number of loose ends in regards to what evidence either side can present to the jury. Prosecutors say they plan to ask that Donald Trump be held in contempt of court for attacking potential witnesses on social media in violation of that partial gag order that the judge imposed on him. So a lot of back and forth now, kind of about the nuts and bolts of this case uh, before we get to the kind of meat of uh, the trial. Uh, but certainly, Matthew, a historic moment, as you mentioned there, and a moment not just important on the legal front in the United States, but on the political front, too, as Donald Trump tries to re-enter the White House. Ned Torfik there at the courthouse. Thanks very much. Let's bring in Nima Rumani. Uh, thank you for joining us here on the process. A brief first thought on the moment we've reached with a former US president there in a courtroom, potentially in the dock. Well, this is a historic day in New York, and Netta talked about it. I mean, for the first time in American history, a former president is being prosecuted. And even though it's the least serious of the four criminal cases, District Attorney Alvin Bragg was the first to charge Donald Trump and really opened the door for folks like Jack Smith and Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis to follow suit. So it's going to be interesting to see what the result is in this case, because, of course, we know that this is just the beginning of Trump's criminal problems. Yes, four cases. Uh, what do you make of the strength or weakness of this one? Well, it's a strong case with respect to the misdemeanor charges, because I believe the jury will find that Trump did falsify those business records, that he did pay Stormy Daniels, and that he unlawfully reimbursed Michael Cohen and categorized it as a legal expense. The question, though, is under New York law, was it in furtherance of or to cover up another crime? So you see... The district attorney's office, they're talking about maybe campaign finance violations or tax evasion. A little bit of a convoluted legal argument, because if Trump is able to prove that the payment didn't happen or he didn't have the affair or that he just made the payment to protect his family and save them from embarrassment, that's just a misdemeanor and a slap on the wrist under New York law. We are going to watch and see what transpires. But of course, it is unlikely to have any impact on Trump's base. But is it a different story when it comes to those perhaps in the middle, the undecided, the independents? Because potentially here you could have a convicted felon standing to be your next president. 
I think it will turn off some undecided voters if Trump is indeed convicted. And you're right. There's a certain percentage of the American people that will never believe that Trump has done anything unlawful, that believe that he's being treated unfairly, railroaded by our criminal justice system. But if he is indeed convicted, and if he gets on the stand and he perjures himself, and I fully expect him to testify in this case, even though he doesn't have to, Legally, politically, I think he does. I think that's something that in swing states and certain voters could cost him the election if he loses here. Now, as we introduce you, you're a former prosecutor. We don't know if Donald Trump is going to take to the stand. But if he did, what would you be, what would uh, your strategy be? Would you be trying to goad him? Would you be trying to get him to incriminate himself? How would you uh, actually face... Uh, a potential like that of of cross-examining a former president. We talked about a historic moment that this trial is, and Trump taking the stand and being subject to that cross-examination will be fireworks. I personally would have gone after him very aggressively. I do think he's going to take the stand because he took the stand in the civil fraud case there in New York. And obviously a different case, different audience. It was a bench trial, not a jury trial. But here, he's going to take the stand and explain away why he would make this payment to Stormy Daniels. He'll have to say that he never had the affair and that he made the payment just to keep her quiet to try to win the election. But again, we're talking about a former porn star. We're talking about an extramarital affair. Those are the types of things that some voters will not like. So I would be very aggressive if I were the prosecutor handling this case. Final quick thought, because I'm reading here that as we're talking now, prosecutors are asking the judge to fine Donald Trump a thousand dollars each for uh, the three posts that violate the gag order in place. He, at regular intervals, has been really going after the judge's daughter, witnesses. How much of a potential problem is that likely to be if he continues to behave like that? The gag order is a huge problem because the orders aren't being enforced. Even in the New York civil fraud case, when the judge imposed a fine, imposed fines of five and ten thousand dollars that's nothing for someone like donald trump so for prosecutors to be asking trump to be sanctioned a thousand dollars that's not going to do anything he needs to be held in contempt and contempt can result in jail time now of course judges have been hesitant to take the unprecedented step of jailing a former president but otherwise these gag orders aren't worth the electronic paper they're written on Nima Romani, we have to leave it there on this, which is day one. Perhaps we'll talk again in the coming weeks. Great to talk to you. Great to have you on the programme. Thanks for having me, as always.